So that was part of the whole thing with um, when Guillermo was having. This I am just as curry, and I'm talking from my closet. <laughs> this interview is gonna be. He goes yes. like this. He does this. He goes like. I'm showing. I'm, I'm telling you a story, but I'm really showing you my stuff. <laughs> like, no, 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 go, go, go. Look no, at me. No. I'm so. Look at me. I have a bunch of I'm toys. I'm like a peacock. I like to have the that. Repro. Yeah, the reproductions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> excited I'm in my home I'm surrounded by family and loved ones this is like the pre viewing party for plastic Who crack said we now love I, you? yes now I've been talking about plastic crack non-stop it's gonna be a documentary it's gonna I'm gonna put the notes in the description on where it's gonna air and when so you can find it but I kind of get first dibs on watching it so Guillermo the director of plastic crack flew in from Venezuela and he showed me he brought a hard drive Here's my wonderful mother right here, helping with everything. How are ya? My brother is already getting the booze, even though it's six in the morning. Um, hello, wife. That is my wife getting a bounce house. We have decorations here. I was able to get my man card for one day and be able to decorate the upstairs. If my wife got mad at me because I said, technically, if you died, this is how it would look all the time. And she's like, how dare you say that? But I have like, General Grievous, Sideshow, all kinds of... We got guys talking about Star Wars, Megatron, all kinds of fun stuff. Just want to show you just because I have to preserve the memory of me being able to actually display toys. Oh, yeah, so you don't want to hear. Oh, okay. What? They just made that photo last night. Hello. Justin. Yeah. Justin, you want to go set up a big piece bounce house out in the driveway? Okay. We need to put a big tarp down. Can you find a big tarp? Yes. Okay. He has the God of Thunder. That applies to No Man No. <laughs> he says No Man No. He hates the video camera, he hates the spotlight. That's alright. I like, I smell blood in the water. It makes him incredibly uncomfortable. So that's why I try to get as much video of him as you. You're welcome. And I'm a horrible human being. So I'll I'll edit you out later. Thank you. It'll just be a blur. It'll just be like It'll a witness a protection blur. program blur. Yeah. Rah, 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 rah. Hello, hello, how are you all? Good. Alright. We got a few more people and then we're gonna be starting here momentarily. Right. Sound good? Food's in there. I gotta get the bounce house set up. One moment. So I collect pretty much anything that reminds me of my childhood. It all really just started with my mother getting me my first uh, G.I. Joe whale in the box. I try to collect memories. I try to collect nostalgia. I try to collect all the things that made me happy when I was a, back in the day when I was a kid. And I think it does. It, you're kind of recreating your childhood. It's such a powerful connection to our past. I think everybody tries to search for their childhood. If, if you had a good one, then I had a great one. It's the nostalgia of, like, it's a, this recreation of your youth and having the toys you had as a kid. I received the Ice Saber. I was ex very ecstatic to receive any G.I. Joes in general because my family didn't have a lot of money. About how they had it and what it meant to them, how their mom sold it at a garage sale. Because I remember going into the stores. I remember seeing them on the shelf. The, the racks were from the ground to almost the ceiling. Standing close, I would stand back and try to just see everything and go, wow. The aisles and all the rows of these great toys. You buy a figure and then on the back, you got all the faces of all the other new figures. And you're like, huh? My dad was trying to teach me the lesson of money. And I remember seeing commercials for it. I remember I watched the cartoon after school. Because Ghostbusters is my thing. And I was saying, I gotta have this. My dad says, no. It was like a mini Christmas. Every time seeing a Toys R Us logo or KB Toys, 
You walk in, you see all these cool toy lines, you see all these glossy packaging and this cool artwork that's just made to catch your eye. I can't tell you how many times they would say yes, but you know, one toy or, or um, we're not getting anything though, just looking. Hey guys, we just got done watching eight episodes of Plastic Crack. Now there's gonna be 12 episodes. It's powerful stuff. I mean, it wasn't all about, hey, look at this, this is this action figure. I mean, it was real world stuff. You know, I there's a lot of parts where I was vulnerable in it. I mean, it was shot over a long period of time and just tons of things I was saying and a lot of the stuff I didn't even remember saying. It was like watching someone else and, and even some of my close friends, you know, t sharing their stories and whatnot. Um, it was great. Let me just go along right here for a little bit. Tom, Tom showed up right at the end from Tom's Vintage Toys. He's back there. Jason. How are you guys doing? Good, man. Santa showed up right at the last second. <laughs> That's right, yeah. And, well, I mean, you only caught the last episode, and then you got to see all the episodes. What was your, your feeling? That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, first season production quality versus last. I would have watched it in its rawest form and still would have been just as happy as right. like, seeing season one and how it's going to it. So it's fun because it, it's not just, oh, this is his episode, this is my episode, that's his episode. Like, it's still being scattered and sprinkled yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, like, it's like, oh, you like that guy? Well, he, he come on back and you'll see him again. You know what I mean? It's always fun. It's pretty cool. And they left cliffhangers on every episode. Really? So you're like, I I want to know what happens and we always say to be continued yeah. and what he meant by um, seasons so we watched the first four um, episodes and that would be considered season one and those were more polished and then season two was episode five through eight and those were a little you know the sound quality and video just needed a little some, 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 some mixing and editing and things like that. well the editing was done but like uh, name inserts and uh, yeah, sound, sound and whatnot. Whatnot. Color, color washing and filters I guess I guess you'd say. So, and, uh, and I had mentioned earlier, I said, um, even if I wasn't involved or I didn't know a soul involved in this thing, it was in, I wanted to watch it. I was yeah, at the edge of my seat going, ah, oh my gosh, what is that? I want to pause it. What's in the background? And, and seeing other pictures. It's like a, it's like a scavenger hunt almost uh, with your eyeballs. Oh. <laughs> It's amazing how many of our stories are connected. Like we all kind of have a, a similar, sure, you know. Sure. Yeah. Like I'll, I'll, you know, I'll hit a topic that we talked about in your store about, you know, asking a lady on a date, and my mom coming up and going, "Hey, I found this, I found this figure you wanted from the store," and I'm like, "No, that's not mine. It's my brother's." And then it transitions to someone else going, "Yeah, I was so embarrassed you know, trying to date people because I didn't want to bring them to my house because I've got toys." And you know, this guy that was a, a you know, a, a big wig bar owner. Yeah, hit, had a closet that he never opened for anybody and hit all his toys. And it's yeah. like, it's like, what? Well, it's just weird that everybody has a, a same story, yep. but just similar, but just different enough that you can identify with. I was embarrassed. Too. You were embarrassed. You were embarrassed. Right. Now yeah. you can go to cons and dress up like anybody you want, and you feel like a rock star now versus you know, yeah. being embarrassed. And oh yeah, I remember out. being 16 years old and getting rid of my toys yeah. in my comic books dumped them because I'm 16 now and that's the <laughs> yeah, yeah, girls yeah. don't think that's cool yeah. and then two years later I go to college and there's a guy in my dorm and his room is full of comic books and toys and oh, I go you mean you can just like what you like and not worry about what people think mind blown I'm like I'm back in oh wow yeah Monday yeah yeah that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, you just like what you like. Mm -hmm. yeah. And who cares? Yeah. And that was kind of the journey you missed a little bit before, but we talked about it in the shop, about how I was dealing with some fresh, at the time, some issues at work, and I was, you know, hiding my whole persona and toy collecting, and it's kind of, you know, playing out for everyone. And it, you know, it inspired me to kind of talk about it when it was fresh with you guys, and then it was captured on film, so hopefully it can help other people that are kind of, you know, I don't know, in the closet, shame, whatever. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Fear. Right. It's, hey, this is toys. This is right. passion. There's nothing right. love what you hurt anybody. Love Who cares what other people think? Not, it's not, it's not, you know, you earn friendships. There's a lot of people that met their husbands and wives yeah. doing the same thing. Which we should watch. Look, look at Mr. Santiago. Yeah. yeah. Just, you know, running around freaking out of the con. So he was like... I got, down. Yeah, yeah. Man, I, I got this boy right here. He's right. going to be mine someday. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. So, yeah. Let, me, let me transition over.
Are you walking? Good talk. What am I doing? You're not moving, are you? I thought you were shaking hands. Uh, no. I, I was, I just said, say hi. You know, okay. I said, it's 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 hard to do my goodbye. So, Mochi Joe, you have to, you have to like, stand, just so we're on the same level. Now we're, now we're on the same level. If I sit, stand right here, I gotta freaking look up the whole time. Here you go, there's your level. Yes. Right. <laughs> it's crazy. And you can see it when they're interacting in the toy room. I, I don't realize it. I really don't. It was pretty silly. Like, when we're watching the, the, the like, <laughs> in, the, in the kitchen. Oh, man. I can sit on my counter. I didn't realize. Yeah, you're sitting down, and I'm like, sir. Okay, I'll, I'll get your PayPal info in a little bit. Uh, text me your PayPal. All right. But, I mean, we had real world conversations. Like, oh, yeah, some of the conversations, you know, just about toys and toys, but we're talking about. There you go. Yeah, spread, spread the legs out. There. How about this? Oh, there. That'll work. There you All go. right, now. So, now, Justice now. Curry is here. <laughs> You're Finally. calling to me. This so, tell weird. me, what was, your, what was your impression for the whole thing? It's really good. It's yeah. really good. Really, really good. Describe good. Like, what did you like most about it? Uh, I like that they got into really the behind the scenes of kind of what, I don't want to say we, but we do and a lot of people do and, and the, the intricacies of just buying these toys and then some lip flipping and I don't think and I don't want to speak for everybody but most of us aren't millionaires we, we're not making tons and tons and tons of money so there has to be a justification for it this kind of gives a little insight as to Okay, these guys are a little elite, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they're not insane. They're not, insane. Yeah. They're not yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. They don't all live in the basement. Some do. Yeah. <laughs> but you look at like the top-notch guy in the Star Wars community, Gus Lopez, yeah. who has just mind-boggling prop, original props from Star Wars. Insane. And one of a kind of prototypes of the toys, and he kind of gave his business model. Hey, I've been doing. It. I make calculated risks. I'm not just putting, you know, maxing out credit cards. Oh yeah. And, and he talked about it to normalize it. And, and we talked about it too, and other people about, hey, this is Travis and his wife, then my wife, and, and getting you look know, same. I think you're a little different realm where you're you kind of progress now with some bigger lots to where the fun is a little more cushioned than, than I am at this point. But I'll still go like. Hey, I'm going to drop 500 bucks. And at this point in time, because of success and because of track record and because of no burners to date, yeah. it's like the wife's, all right, yeah, they trust you. Go ahead. And they're rooting for it. Worst, worst case. I get my five hundred and ten dollars back, or something, or it was just five hundred. But I have one more piece back in my collection. Yeah, something that was added in there, and it was justified, and it didn't cost the family. I spent more money trying to build retro rags and getting that off the ground than my toys. Buy retro rags. Retroragslimited.com. Shameless plug. Is this? No, no this one is. This is retro rags. Normally, I'm wearing retro rags shirts or hoodies, and we talked about it in the past. Uh, in the past, and I'm going to do a video in the future about his whole operation and shirts and availability. But they're amazing stuff. So a little shameless plug. Yeah. And from and, the and from, from these 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 people from the community. Because I'm not an artist. I have you know like creative stuff, but it's from like the Steve the the she is and, and the, the uh, um, J uh, Jeremy De Dewitt and stuff and and those type of people. So it's not just me. they're getting money. It's a love share. I can't do it on my own. So absolutely, it's still the community, and that's. I say it in certain interviews, I've said it before, is I really want to do, if you can turn your passion into a paycheck, then that paycheck is never worth it. You never have to worry about it. And that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been cool, it takes time. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. And this was awesome. Yeah, um, your family was like laying on the wampa rug, and you had big thing of popcorn. popcorn. It was awesome. Here, let me, let me steal you away over here. This is like the bachelorette where, hey, can we have a date over here? Let's talk privately, Steven. Would you put in my drink? Yeah. Sit down, it's okay, it's okay. Don't sit on my child. My child's right there. Look at him, he's just like. Here, just sit right here, just sit right here. It's okay, it's okay. So your birthday was yesterday. Yes, sir. You got Niplor, a custom uh, He-Man figure. I'll put a picture in right now. Ting. Um, so you just got done watching eight episodes of Plastic Crack. You were pretty prominent. I'm actually a little mad at you because you're stealing the spotlight. Like the people are going to yeah. enjoy like you way more than they're gonna like me. And you know I'm um, egocentric, crazy person. So. I agree with everything you just said. <laughs>
<laughs> you do? Yeah. Um, and especially in episode eight, and again, there's going to be links in the description on how you can watch Plastic Crack, but episode eight was extremely powerful because... Um, you know, you were sprinkled in most of all of the episodes with the podcasting, Podcasters Universe, My Wife's Gonna Kill Me, another shameless plug. Mostly saying a bunch of bullshit. Right, and we're, we're goofing around, but episode eight, you kind of opened your heartstrings. And it, I, even though I put, had this hard candy shell on, it was making me tear up a little bit. Like, we've t- you've mentioned in the past, just in, you know, an offhanded comment about, hey, you know, I struggled with anxiety. And, okay, we don't, I don't go, tell me more. Tell me more. You know, that's not how guys act. But you did. You kind of went into your past, and it was, like, powerful. What was... What was oh, well, that, that was a leap of faith in the time, because when you... When you open up like that, um, you don't know. I mean, we just I met Guillermo an hour earlier. <laughs> the director, or two yeah. hours. Yeah, Guillermo, the director, fantastic guy. But just met him, right. you know, and you don't know how you're going to be edited, what he's going to do with the footage, and it was just kind of a ton of trust. Yeah, you, had to... you, you know. Without, and now I know Guillermo. You know, since then we've become, you know, we've had many contacts back and forth, and actually become friends, friends. real friends. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And so I, you know, I, I'm pretty trustful of him now. But you know, then it was, it was, it was like jumping off a diving board. You can't, you can't, <laughs> you can't stop. take it back. You're going in the water. Yeah, you started so, on that train. And and just to recap, not to go through the whole thing because you you have to watch it. But you're talking about you know childhood and not having much money and anxiety and, and a lot of issues that are associated in, in grade school and how collecting toys and drawing really helps you through that. Um, but I think why it's so powerful is kind of guys put up that shield and we don't say anything about it and we kind of don't even tell our loved ones or spouses about it. But if they see you, this manly, strong person, talking about it with a luscious beard and a pompadour, they're going to go, hey, if he can talk about it, maybe I should you know, open it's, up and get help. Or, I don't look at it as something to be shameful about. It's something that's that awesome. is in my genetics. It happens. There's nothing. It's, yep. it's just the way it is. And now, at the age I'm at now, I'm pretty good at dealing with it. But when I was a child, no one knew what it was. So right. that, was the, that was the hard part. Yeah, um, and, yeah so... It, it did come out. I was really happy with how it came out. I, I glanced at you a few times while it was coming out, just or while it was airing on the TV. What did you think you saw? What's going to happen? I saw you gripping your wife's hand really tight. Uh-huh. I saw some tears. No, that was my eyes were watering. I don't cry. You're not incapable. I don't have you too have many tear feelings. Ducks. You have tons of feelings. You are the so- biggest softie I've ever I looked at my wife and she was like, that was so nice. And I was like, I don't even care. <laughs> Stop <laughs> pretending you're Travis Bolt. Well, Travis Bolt is the guy that's been credited with having no soul. And even while we're watching it, like all of us are quiet. I'm looking at my wife. She's tearing up. I'm looking at my mom. mom she's tearing up. And Travis says, what a big P word or something. I, know. I wouldn't expect any less of him. And I'm glad he said that because it, right. broke, it made it, me laugh. It made you laugh. Half everyone else is like, what a a-hole to Travis, but it was awesome. Um, but, but enough about me, the whole series is great. Yes, it I mean, was. well, we haven't seen the whole series, but what we have seen right, right. is great. So we've seen the first eight, there's going to be 12, and I'm excited that there's still kind of that anticipation for those last four that you have right. no idea what's going to air. Right, and no, me too, I feel the same way. Who's your favorite collector? And can't say you. Actually, honestly, um, I don't even remember her name, but I, I really love the girl with the ponies. You like the pony girl? Yeah. Okay. I don't know so about it. She seemed nice. She and, seemed uh, bubbly. Yeah. She seemed like the female version of you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's it. Yeah. But she just, the way she held them, and she just is so sincere. And, yep. yep. And um, so, yeah, I, I, I thought... <laughs> I thought she was really cool. Yeah. One of the, I shouldn't say this because she's probably watching this, but when she's like, Mom, give me something to drink, it was in one of the outtakes. And, and I was saying at the time, like, Mom, me loaf! Yeah. Me loaf! From uh, Wedding Crashers. Exactly. But I know how she is, because in the outtakes, I was asking my wife to give me something to drink. You were! Yeah. You were saying, see, another connection. Right. Oh, my gosh. And they used uh, some stop-motion animation. Very cool. With the garbage truck, because you told the story, your dad was a garbage man. Yes. And he had, like, a Playmobil garbage truck. And don't spoil it all. Okay. The, there's some awesome stop-motion animation in there that was powerful. 
even the first episode had some really cool things with the skate with the ice rink and stuff. Well, I'm glad you came here. Um, I'm glad to be invited to your birthday party yesterday where I gave, got rid of that vinyl pop figure I couldn't sell. Yeah, you sure so did. <laughs> alien. The dog chewed it up this morning. I'm sure he did. Any, any parting words? No, just uh, watch Plastic Cracks. If you love toys, or even if you don't, it's just a good show. So yeah. when it comes out, I don't know when you're going to post this, maybe four years down Probably the road. Probably five, yeah. But uh, I'll check it out. And um, Absolutely. I don't know how you can enjoy it. Yes. Thank you. Now we're going to interview the star of the show. Uh, Baby J. No, we just got done watching Plastic Crack. Yes, that's just all the candy that we caught you yeah. eating all the candy earlier today. What was that all about? What do you have to say for yourself? What's that? Did you just wake up? Were you taking a nap? You fell asleep? Did you fall asleep? Oh, you're so tired. I love you. Where's my brother? Liz. What did you think? Um, what did I think about what? The what weather? You, yes, the weather. I think it's No, what well, we just spent the last seven hours watching Plastic Crack. It was really cool. Crack. I loved it. Expand. Cool. You love it. Who are you videotaping? It's a wide angle, so... Oh, okay. It'll give us um, expand the, I don't know what to say. Like, it was really cool just, like, hearing so many different people's stories and stuff. And then, um, obviously, uh, the highlights for me were Carlos's, um, Oh, yeah. Like, his videos from, like, his childhood at Christmas and stuff were incredible. Um, also, Steve's, you know, story and stuff. And, um, him and you, uh, the, the guy that... The guy that you guys are talking about having a big influence on your life and stuff, how he like watched your video and um, spoke back to you guys. I thought that was just really, really cool too, you know. And so I think there's like just a lot of personal touch in it, and uh, it was a really nice. It was just really fun. Thank you for being part of it. You're welcome. And you had some fun interview parts. Oh yeah. Got to roll my eyes. Ah. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I gotta ask. All right. So this is my mother and brother. They, I, I've been waiting to say. I'm just going to apologize to everybody who was uh, watching Justin and Steven when I came up and raised my shirt while Justin was talking about a very, it's like, man, I was getting tears in my eyes and I came up and lifted my shirt while you were talking with them on the couch. When you were sitting with Steven on the couch, I was like, I lifted my shirt laughing and you looked at him in the eyes and you're like, man, I was getting tears in my eyes as that was happening. Like, like why did I have to? I picked the wrong time, so it was it was felt good. You mean like right now? You I the wrong time? I questioned many a times when I was watching this show. Like I felt like I was there with everybody. I'm not a toy collector in any way, shape, or form. I don't collect anything. Right. I. You I collect stories. I collect stories. Bad stories, that, bad unfortunate stories, things, yeah. a series of unfortunate events. So you're, you're not even looking at me. You're the it's, only looking it's, at him. No, it's a Look how wide screen. I am a beautiful if human I, being. If I'm right here, it'll still get mom. It's such a wide screen. So it was fantastic. I just could not believe. I am a huge fan of Pawn Stars, American Pickers, um, Comic Book Men and uh, Top Gear, like the reality shows, and I felt like I was watching yes. higher quality. The soundtrack made me feel so happy and a part of everything. Yeah. And those That's first episodes like that he went through, and he it was like the perfect way he wanted, I was just like, Gosh, what am I watching? I'm like waiting for this to premiere on Thursday night on AMC. That's what well, I feel it's like. it's going to, I mean, it's professional. It is We don't have beautiful. the venue yet. Randy, how are you? I'm dizzy. What'd you think, Mom? I'm just shaking my head. Wait, yeah, I felt. Thank you, sweetheart. To the day, I was thinking the same thing. Uh, it's not only professionally What's done, that? but it made me. Um, Adult drink. Yeah, she didn't want to say what we were talking about earlier on the show. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I was having. I'm a Grandma's struggling alcoholic, not struggling, and Grandma's boozing it up over here on her fifth of vodka. And in the baby child's cup. Yeah, and oh, in my daughter's infant cup. How dare you, mother? How dare you? I'm kidding. Yeah.
So what? No, what the was show. Your... My impression of the show is, I even though you know I watch you mm-hmm. all the time, I keep track of you. You're the president of my fan club. That's right. It it drew me in. It, it drew me in. It made me laugh. It had me waiting to see what was going to happen. Right. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Really, it was not. It was about your life and everyone else's life and how it unfolded. And that made the show so watchable. So watchable. Uh, really, really. I was so happy to have you and Aaron there. Because, you know, I get to see my toy buddies. You guys live a little farther away, so I don't have to yeah. see you as often. And then you kind of got to see me in my element, uh, with yeah. lack of a better term, you know. No, but it's true. It, it's um, I already know you and things like that. But I like how you talk about how things unfolded in your life. Those are all new things. Yeah. That's so, pretty cool. Thank you, Mom. I love you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad I came. I would never miss something so awesome. I'm gonna thank some of the people. Because I like her reaction. Oh, yeah. He was like, I'm gonna try my best to get Guillermo on film. Because he's very elusive. He's hard to pin down. Hey guys, I'm back. Um, so I've interviewed a lot of different people after watching Plastic Crack, people that were involved in it or spouses, significant others, and kind of got their take. But who I really wanted to talk to the most was the man, the myth, the legend. But this guy doesn't like to be on film. I'm constantly shoving a camera in his face. He likes to be on the other side of the camera and directing, producing, editing. So this took a lot. Like I had to give him some of my very rare uh, reproduction stuff. He doesn't know it's reproduction, but now he does. But without further ado, this is the director of Plastic Crack, Guillermo. How are you doing, my friend? Good. You. I don't know about the myth or the legend or whatever. He he don't. He's he's modest. He is a legend. Yeah.